Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, so we are, we are continuing with severe plastic deformation and that the next uh, process which we are going to discuss today is called multi axial folding. Okay? So, as, as I was mentioning earlier also in uh, accumulated roll bonding that uh, these techniques you can use easily use your existing equipments to do uh, these processes and easily can be modified to do this SPD processes. Okay. So, multi axial forging is also based on uh, forging. Okay. So, for if you have a forging base press, it can be easily used to do this kind of deformation. Okay. So, basically in this what we do is uh, again the idea for all SPD processes is that there should not be uh, change in the, the dimension of the, uh, of the sample or of the, uh, of the work piece. Okay when you are doing the deformation. Okay. So, e, whether you take E cap or you take ARB or you take friction start processing, the overall dimension of the material uh, should not change when you are deforming the material. Okay. Whereas, in our conventional processes, there, uh, there, there used to be a change in the, the dimension of the material. So, if you are do, doing rolling, your thickness will reduce. If you are doing extrusion, your cross sectional area will reduce. Okay and forging again your length and the thickness of the billet will reduce. Okay. So, there is always a change in the dimensions of the, uh, of the work piece whereas, in case of SPD processes the process is designed such that that uh, after uh, may not be uh, in first pass, but may after doing multiple passes or doing a one cycle of pass okay, you should be able to get back to the starting uh, condition okay and there should not be any geometrical change in the uh, sample uh, and th um, in, in the work piece and that is how you actually you are able to introduce so much uh, deformation or strain in the material because you are coming back to the the original dimension okay so in that series again this is a, a multi axial forging okay so the, the idea is that first you so the, the three non parallel uh, surfaces of the sample is shown by three colors here okay black color red color and green color okay so you first deform on the black surface for example so what will happen uh, if you are constraining in one dimension okay so what will happen that there is a uh, elongation uh, of of the material in this direction perpendicular to the red plane okay because you have constrained the deformation where the in the direction perpendicular to the green plane okay so the deform the lengthening is there and the uh, shortening is there where you have applied the compressive strain or uh, compressive deformation okay then in the next cycle so now the this particular dimension is the longer one so now we are going to deform on the red plane Okay, uh, and you are constraining the deformation in the direction perpendicular to black plane. Okay, so now you can see lengthening is in the direction perpendicular to the green plane. So the next uh, deformation will be on the green plane. Okay, and you are allowing it to have lengthening in the direction perpendicular to the black plane, and again you have come to the first stage. So, one complete cycle require these three passes. Okay. So, in um, multi axial foraging always you will see the, the any property shown in, in multiples of 3. So, 3, 6, 9 and so on because you will reach the initial stage only after these three deformation uh, pass. Okay. So, in uh, x, y, z three different uh, direction uh, and the amount of strain which you put in is very simply the strain uh, the logarithmic strain which is the true strain okay so initial height divided by 
the final height of billet okay that should give me the uh, the strain which you are imposing in the material okay in each in each uh, forging pass okay now this is the microstructural evolution as a function of a strain okay so uh, at 0.5 uh, strain 1.5 strain so in this way the strain is increasing okay and you can see the effect of strain on the grain refinement. So, initially grains are coarse okay. of course, also looks elongated in one direction okay. and uh, there is some substructure development within the grain also okay. and then by next cycle by a strain of 1.5 okay, you can see that the grain uh, is now getting fragmented into smaller grains okay some fine grains are there and still some coarse grain with some substructure is there okay so if you may try to see the strain from here to here you will see some strain gradient in the grain okay now you start seeing even uh, more fragmentation of the grain okay some are very fine grain structures are there okay and still some uh, coarse grains are there for example this and this one okay and of course uh, you have even more refinement after a strain of 10.5 okay though the uh, the structure look heterogeneous there are coarse grain as well as fine grain okay and this is the work uh, done in fe 32% nickel alloy multi axially forged okay so the grain refinement is usually through uh, dynamic recrystallization okay, and slowly you can see the effect of strain on the recrystallization process the grain refinement. Okay. Now how this uh, uh, recrystallization takes place in multi axial forging okay, is shown schematically here one uh, mechanism. Okay. So you have this initial grain, okay. so when you are deforming from here okay it is getting elongated in this direction okay and there are also some deformation bands which are uh, being introduced in the material during the deformation process okay usually at around 35 to 45 degrees to the to the forging direction okay then now in multi axial forging you keep changing the uh, loading direction okay so what will happen in the next cycle there is another band which will form at an uh, another angle to this the initial uh, initial deformation band. So, this is initial then one is an another one which is created which is intersecting the initial one okay. and when this new deformation band is going to be created okay. so it, it is like a dislocation movement okay. what it will create it will create a kind of a kink in the first deformation band. Okay, it will displace it okay, because when you have a slip process the slip process is like this you when you have slip process there, there is going to be a uh, uh, offset. Okay. So, that kind of offset will be created in the first deformation band then again we will change the direction of the uh, forging okay. again a new band will create which will cut all the previous deformation bands and so on okay. and one uh, example of deformation band is shown here in the uh, in the micrograph okay so this is a big grain okay which is uh, sheared into a and b two parts okay through the deformation band here okay so this now you can see the smaller subgrains will form and this deformation bands consist of uh, uh, high dislocation density so you can consider it as a low angle grain boundary okay and so you will divide the grain into sub grains okay and slowly there will be the cdrx process will be through subdivision into sub grains and then the grain rotation uh, sub grain rotation will create a create a uh, high angle grain boundary okay so this gradual change from uh, low angle to high angle grain boundary takes place by subdivision plus uh, sub grain rotation Okay, that is what uh, was proposed in this particular work and th that is how you get uh, grains with high angle grain boundaries. Now, what will be the effect on grain boundary character distribution? Okay. So, when you are having all this microstructural change for example, this work was on uh, warm multi axial forging on a, on a plain carbon steel okay. and uh, as you can see that 
there is initially the grains are dividing into sub grains ok. So, obviously, there will be increase in the fraction of low angle grain boundary ok and later on these low angle grain boundaries are getting converted into high angle grain boundaries which can be through any uh, of the CDRS, uh, CDRX mechanism ok grain rotation or conversion of these low angle grain boundary through continuous uh, recovery of dislocation into high angle grain boundaries and so on ok. So, there are multiple mechanisms of CDRX. So, this all this mechanism will, will operate ok and different material different mechanisms are proposed ok. So, obviously, that uh, if you see that what is the effect of uh, number of uh, passes on the deformation ok. So, as I told you that in, in multi axial forging we will be doing in multiples of uh, 3. So, this is 3 pass this is 6 and this is 9 pass ok. So, initially uh, uh, the microstructure which was taken in this work was uh, well recrystallized uh, annealed microstructure. So, the high angle grain boundary fraction was very high ok around 85 percent, but as the deformation is progressing after third pass the high angle grain boundary fraction decreased from 85 percent to 30 percent ok and obviously, at the same time because these fractions are calculated for the total ok the low angle grain boundary fraction is increasing ok and going up to 70 percent uh, after third pass ok. So, this initial phase is the development of the substructure grain subdivision by having low angle grain boundary within the grain ok. If you keep deforming ok now after 6 pass you can see that the high angle grain boundary fraction is again increasing from 30 per, uh, percent to around 60 percent ok and with further deformation it is increasing up to 70 percent ok. So, with the grain uh, refinement now initially the, the grain is, is divided into sub grains and now this uh, sub grain boundaries are converting into high angle grain boundaries. So, uh, after uh, 9 pass for example, you will have now uh, refined or ultra fine grain material with a very small grain size and all the grain boundaries most of the grain boundaries are uh, high angle grain boundaries ok. So, this is a typical grain boundary character distribution as a function of strain or as a function of passes in, in during any SPD process generally. This is a example of grain refinement in S cast uh, AZ 61 magnesium alloy ok. Uh, so, so, this is an another good example that you can uh, convert an S cast material into a rot material ok and with a very refined or very fine microstructure ok. As you know that magnesium alloys are HCP material. So, deformation is usually uh, very very difficult ok. So, in this case because you are able to introduce lot of deformation through continuous change of the direction of deformation ok. You are able to introduce lot of strain in the material. So, strain you can see on the x axis here ok. So, they are able to achieve a strain of 4 after around 6 pass or so ok. So, in S cast material ok initially they, they, they observed inhomogeneity in the microstructure ok. By third pass or fourth pass the inhomogeneity is decreasing and fifth and sixth pass the, the, the microstructure is homogeneous ok. Obviously, uh, considering uh, the passes uh, will be the uh, amount of deformation or the change in the direction of the deformation also ok. So, as, as you are going to longer cycle or multiple deformation uh, direction ok. So, initially it will be homogeneous for first and second pass by third pass ok, because you have done the whole cycle ok. So, homogeneity will start coming in the material ok. So, which was not there in the rolling process in the ARB process because your continuously deformation directions are remaining same ok. So, there you will see this kind of uh, elongated grains and so on, but in E cap if you are using BC root or multi axial forging you will start seeing that you are getting equixed microstructure.
of course, it will have effect on the, the on the mechanical properties of the material. So, as your passes are increasing and material is becoming homogeneous and of course, getting refined also uh, by fifth six pass uh, your hardness is uh, increased by uh, from 58 HV to around 74 HV here ok again as a function of equivalent strain ok. Now, in th some uh, studies uh, the, the, the there is also uh, uh, people have found out that there is a softening during the deformation process ok. So, actually they have measured the flow stress during the forging process itself ok. So, these are not uh, stress strain curve after the uh, deformation, but during the deformation process ok. This is an aluminum alloy uh, deformed at room temperature ok. So, you can see the effect of uh, as you keep deforming effect of a strain on the on the flow stress property. So, the first cycle you can see the the, the flow stress is around uh, 100 mega Pascal or so ok, which increase to in the next cycle it increased to around uh, maybe 120 or 130 mega Pascal then continuously the flow stress is increasing ok and then you are changing the pass ok. So, again the it will go up and uh, come down and so on ok, but as you can see by 6 after 6 pass again you can see that there is a decrease in the flow stress ok. And uh, they have uh, kind of attributed this change in the flow stress to these two terms. Okay, so when you are deforming, okay, so of course you are uh, uh, increasing the dislocation density in the material. Okay, but if there is a recrystallization process also going on simultaneously, okay, there will be refinement in the grain size. Okay, so the grain bound as a function of uh, and so grain boundary term that means, effect of grain boundary is increasing ok, whereas the dislocation density is decreasing ok and the effect of these two term ok. Uh, so, dislocation density will contribute to work hardening or strain hardening ok and this grain boundary will contribute to uh, uh, effect of hall patch relationship ok. So, that contribution is increasing dislocation density term is decreasing ok. So, when both are contributing the initially there is a increase in the flow stress uh, ok, but later on when th this is coming down the dislocation term is com coming out and there is not much contribution from the from the refinement in grain size ok, the softening is taking place ok. Of course, in some other cases when the grain refinement is very fine ok or grain size is very fine uh, people have ascribed uh, attributed this softening be behavior to the change in the deformation mechanism ok. Uh, earlier we discussed about grain boundary sliding ok. So, sometimes the softening can be due to uh, change in the deformation mechanism or it may be due to the uh, effect of uh, the microstructural uh, uh, properties ok, uh, that whether dislocation density how it is changing in grain boundary uh, uh, or grain size how it is affecting the overall stress ok. Now, uh, as uh, uh, we are continuously discussing this part ok, uh, so there is a very nice study about effect of different SPD processes ok. So, you have E cap, uh, you have multi axial forging and you have accumulated roll bonding ok. And the accumulated strain in each of these processes ok was uh, noted down ok. And uh, what is the effect of that on the micro hardness is plotted here ok. So, you can see there are four different uh, conditions. one is multi axial forging E cap. In this case my after multi axial forging a uh, cold rolling was also done ok. So, C r is cold rolling here and fourth process is uh, the accumulated roll bonding ok. So, if you see uh, all these four processes they are nicely following a one uh, kind of a generic uh, behavior 
okay, that if, if the accumulated strain in all these cases is same, okay, the effect on micro hardness or the mechanical property is same. Okay, so, they will all contribute to uh, the, the, the hardness in the same way. So, it does not depend if by which route you are able uh, you are putting in strain in the material. Okay. Their contribution uh, to, to the hardness or mechanical property will remain same. Okay. And we have also seen that when the strength is increasing, the elongation to failure or ductility is decreasing, which is also kind of true for all the processes. Okay. So, this is a very interesting thing that how I am putting the strain is not an important factor here. But if the strain is same in all the processes, uh, I am going to achieve the same mechanical property irrespective of what process I have used for uh, uh, for introducing a strain in the material. Okay. So, this is kind of a generic phenomena and it is true for all the SPD processes. Okay. So, with this uh, uh, I am completing all the different processes of SPD. Okay. The last lecture in this particular module will be on again on a case study where we have used friction start processing and its effect on the superplastic deformation will be discussed. Okay. So, with that uh, thank you for your attention.